Good afternoon. Welcome to Tulsa City County Library's Tools for Building Business Series. I'm Martha Gregory with the Tulsa City County Library's Research Center. Before we start, we want you to know that this event is being recorded. This is the final of five sessions in the series. Recordings of all five of them will be available for you to access on the library's YouTube channel. All the participants except the speakers are in listen only mode and we will use Zoom's Q&A feature for asking questions and getting answers. So please submit your questions as you think of them. To do so, click on the Q&A at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Questions will be answered periodically throughout the presentation. The library is a treasure trove of amazing resources for our business community and Reference USA is among the most popular of them. Reference USA, like most of our databases, is on the library's website, available 24-7, from any place, any time, and it's free to library cardholders. If you want to get a card and don't have, don't have one and you want to get a card, just visit our website at tulsalibrary.org where you can order a free card online. You only have to work in, be a student in, or live in Tulsa County to qualify. Reference USA is a real heavyweight. Its group of databases has something for everyone. With it, you can find new customers by how they live, their interests and lifestyles, how they spend their money. You can get their names and home addresses and phone numbers if available. You can find where your best customers live and who they are and so much more. You'll really be amazed when you discover all the different things that you can find out about your customers. We're pleased to have with us Bill Carson, Carlson from Info Group in Omaha, Nebraska to showcase Reference USA. Bill has been with Info Group since 2008, and during those years, he has worked with public libraries all over the country, teaching their customers how to use the Reference UA system. Bill will now show us how to explore Reference USA for finding customers by lifestyles. Bill? Hello, and thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Let me just one moment and I will share my screen. You should be able to see that now. As you can tell, I have the Tulsa City County Libraries logo here on the homepage for Reference USA. The logo, which is up here in the upper left-hand corner, this is in fact your home key. So if you needed to get back to this home page, you could select that and it'll bring you right back here. And just a few housekeeping items before we get into the U.S. Consumer Lifestyles module. There is under the About Us a three and a half minute video that would walk you through how we compile our business data. So that information is there if you would like to watch that. And then we do have listed under the contact us both our 800 number as well as an email address that you could send questions through if you would like. You can certainly get assistance through the library, but if you would like to contact us, that's how you would do so. And we do have listed under the Learning Center the webinars that we offer, the, the videos that are out there in YouTube. Some of them are two to three minutes in length and walk you through how uh, to do certain searches or use certain tools. And then there are 30 to 60 minute uh, webinars as well. And then we have some training guides here as well. If you would prefer that in writing, you could certainly get the ABCs of how to search any of the modules that are available in the database at any uh, time that you would like. And also, I like to point out the fact that we do have an app, it's free of charge. When you download the app to your phone and then go to launch that, you'll put in your zip code 
And then at that point in time, it will list the libraries nearest you. You would select the Tulsa City County Library, and then it will ask you to put in your library card number and you're in. And the two modules, there are, only, there are two modules that are in the app right now. That's the U.S. Business Database module and the U.S. Consumer Lifestyles, which we'll cover today. So those are both in that mobile app. And also, we have the ability for you to create a personal account. It's not a shortcut to get to the database by any means. In fact, it's an additional step. Once you've logged in and you've reached here, you can simply come in, register, and then once you've registered, you can log in and get to any saved searches that you've created. So if you were in the U.S. Consumer Lifestyles and wanted to save a search, you could certainly do so and then come back to that at whatever point in time is, is appropriate for you and you get access to that data. In fact, these various modules have different update uh, time frame. So let me provide that to you as well. Our U.S. Business Module, this is updated weekly. So any new information that we get about businesses gets pushed live every Thursday into Friday morning. Whereas the historical business information, that's updated technically at the beginning of the next year. The Canadian business information, that's monthly. Whereas the jobs and internships, that information is updated nightly. Our U.S. new businesses, those are updated weekly, whereas the healthcare, the standard white pages, the consumer lifestyles, and the Canadian white pages, those are all updated monthly. And our last one, the U.S. new movers, new homeowners, this is updated every week. So we're fully licensed to bump our database up against the national change of address. And that's how we populate this information. Certainly might be a tool that if you're looking at finding consumers in a particular geography, you may want to look at this module as well because it's going to provide you with some information about those people who are new to your community. So it could be a terrific tool if you're interested in consumers. Let's go ahead and launch this one. I select the name of it. No matter which module we come into, we're always going to be on that quick search page first. In this example, you could certainly do a name search. You could do a reverse phone number lookup. You could look at all consumer records that we have across any city or state and even drive them in by certain lifestyle categories. And when you click on this, you'll see all of those categories that we're collecting that information on. And we're getting that information from a variety of sources. Certainly surveys that people have completed, magazine subscriptions that people have signed up for, warranty cards that folks have filled out on a product that they've acquired, membership applications. So I was not initially in the database when I first moved back into Omaha. I started shopping at Petco and eventually, because I was there so frequently, had a hungry dog, because I was there so frequently, I ended up being offered a PALS membership. And they talked to me about the discounts that I could receive, etc. So I ended up filling out the card and then mailed that in. I gave them my name, my physical address, and my email address, no phone number. Probably within two months, I was known as a dog lover under the pets and animal category. 
So certainly lots of ways that you can search for information, this being the most basic of them. Let me show you under the advanced search how you could really get very specific with how you would perhaps build your search. And by the way, additional filters goes to the same place, advanced search. So I'll select that tab and it opens up a new window on the left hand column. This is where I would begin making my selections. Now we will always give you the person's name at that particular address, but if you wanted to search by name, you could certainly do that here. Otherwise, no, we will always give you that. Same thing is true with this phone information. We will always provide you both that area code and that phone number for that residence if we have it. I do get this question a lot in, the, in that the people want to know, are there cell phones numbers listed? It's possible there are. We don't know them as such. Imagine if somebody's filled out a warranty card and they've included a phone number that happened to be a cell number, then we could have gotten that from that information, but we wouldn't, we don't have a category for landline versus cell phone. So there's no designation of that being actually a cell phone number. Geography, there are uh, several ways, and I'll certainly show you how you could search the database using some of these various options under geography. You could, in fact, use the estimated home value if you wanted to as a category. You can see that they're broken up into different ranges, and you can select you can se select concurrent ranges if you want wanted to, or you could certainly just select one and maybe one other one. It's just up to how you want to build your search and then we'll provide just the records based on that estimated home value. Or as you can see, the second one there is home income. The third one, contacts per household. Depending on how you would like to build your search, most of the patrons that I work with are looking to identify one person, the primary person at that household, and not necessarily records for multiple people at that household. So if you just need that one record to represent that household, that person that we identify as the primary, and if you think about it, and the, the, the database is certainly sl slanted towards the female gender, simply because the females do so much shopping for the household. So oftentimes when you look at that one record, it's oftentimes, in fact, a female's information. Now that doesn't mean that, that they're necessarily considered the head of household, et cetera, but that's how it's listed in the database because the information came across from Jane Smith, for example. So certainly you can change that to all or one. And then you have a variety of selections under the lifestyles and you have to open this box, put a check mark in that box and that'll open this new window. And then you can begin looking at the categories that are listed there and what you would like to perhaps take a look at or utilize as part of the selection process to drive in just certain types of, of results. I know I spoke to a, a patron who was actually interested in, they had a physical, they had a gym, and so they were interested in those people who were into health, diet, and fitness. So all you have to do is you could click on that plus symbol, it'll break that out, and then that particular category, that person really felt strongly about all three of these categories. So we included all three of those, and then it was just a matter of, of selecting the geography that made sense. And in his case, he wanted to use home income as another way to filter additional information. So let's do this. We'll look at your community 
and I can simply come in here and just say Tulsa and then go and it will give me Tulsa, Oklahoma. I can add that to my list. Now, maybe there was another community near Tulsa that you also wanted to include or look at. You could certainly put more than one city in here. In fact, maybe there was a county adjacent to Tulsa that you wanted to include. You could also include a county uh, as a listing as well, and then you'll get results for the city of Tulsa and that county. Just depends on how you want to frame your search. I'm gonna leave this to the default all because I wanna show you the total differences that we're going to see. And I'll leave this selection as it relates to health, diet, and fitness. And then I'm gonna select home income as well. So he was looking at some specific income ranges that he wanted to include. And we went up to 175,000. So I'm gonna update my count. This is my total number of records across the United States. Now I'm asking the system, okay, show me Tulsa with these income ranges, all per household for these particular categories. It is that simple. So there are 14,000 20 people that fall into that category. And I want to point out, we have this scoring system set up in here. It's zero through nine, but as it notes here, we will only show you people who score a six to a nine. So they're active in these categories that have been chosen. Let's view those results. And notice the first thing you see is this red lettering kind of pop out at you here because everything else is blue or black, right? So this red lettering, it indicates that these phone numbers that are listed here could be on the do not call list and shouldn't be used for phone solicitation. And I would add, unless you have the appropriate hygiene done on this list. Now, the Do Not Call Registry, they will do a certain number of area codes for free, and then they begin charging. So you could certainly contact the Do Not Call Registry to have any list cleaned so that you can get a listing of phone numbers that you could call if you wanted to make telephone calls to those uh, particular people's homes. If you plan on doing a mailing, well, then you've got what you need right here. You can certainly download this information and be able to do a mailer to these, to these particular uh, people. So certainly you could do that. Notice I have the ability to put this information in different forms. I can put it in a heat map. I can summarize it. I can put it in a chart, I could download it, print it, or there's that save search. So if I needed to get back to this information, I could save that. I do want to show you one other thing. Notice we have the 1420 here. I'm going to revise my search slightly. In that, I'm going to, instead of going all per household, I'm going to do it one per household. Watch what happens to my number here. So now it drops it down to 10,000. So I, in essence, got rid of duplicate records. This way, I just reached that primary. I'll view those results. And I'm going to do a couple of different things. I want to show you some tools here before we get into downloading or printing the information. First one is charting it. So you can chart this information. I'll select this. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you that estimated home value because we are we already know we're looking at these income ranges, right? So now it's going to provide estimated home volume, value, excuse me, volume, a state or a zip code look. So it breaks it down by those amounts for those home values for those different ranges. So you can see in in at at nearly eighteen percent. 
1,787 of these records fall in this household uh, va home value range of 200 to 249 etc. by the by the 150 to 174, etc. So you can get that all broken down. You can change this up. If you wanted to see what this looks like based on zip codes, you can change that up to zip codes as well and get that listed. Then you also have a complete report of all the zip codes. Notice there are two pages of this information with all the records associated with those various zip codes. So let's imagine that you had this business, this fitness facility, and that in that particular, with that particular facility, this is your zip code. You could quickly just hyperlink, if you so wished, to that group of 627. And then you could actually download this information and be able to extract it from the database so that you would have that available. I can, I'm gonna cheat and go back here to my chart. So I have that information that I can also print that off or I can make it part of a PowerPoint presentation if need be. So know that you can do that. You can always get back to your original list of records, that some 10,568. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on my heat map as well. Let's see by the map where all these people are at across your community. So it's going to... So there's a heavy concentration here from the, from pert near downtown there, all the way to the, good, I guess it would be the southeastern part of the, the city. So certainly a great area if I were looking at a business, maybe I'm looking at this from the perspective of this is where I would like to consider having my business. Well, gosh, you have plenty of those folks that fall in to those income ranges that are in this area. Certainly, this is a great spot, too. What you could actually do is if you were going to consider opening a gym, now we know where the consumer's at. You, you could actually go back to the U.S. business database and put in uh, the, the search for gyms and be able to compare what you've got for competition based on what you have for all of those folks that would be interested perhaps in your services. Then again, I've got that same breakdown by those zip codes. There's that group of 627 that we looked at a moment ago. So one way to certainly look at those particular opportunities that exist in that part of the city based on those folks that are interested in, in health and fitness. I can certainly print this off, make it power, part of a PowerPoint presentation. I know that lenders love to see this. You know, it's one thing to say, gosh, I've got some 10,000 plus records here of people who would be perhaps interested in my products or services. It's another to be able to show the lender what your plan is as, as it relates to that plan of attack. So certainly a great way to do that is with this heat map. And by the way, if you'll notice here, it does say that if you get to the point in your map view where there are 300 or less records in that zoom to level, this is what you'll see. And I'll just start drilling in a little bit here. I'm going to break that up just a little bit more. Still have over 300 there. Let me drill in that group. Then it will start pinpointing those folks. It gives you that listing, their address, information, name. It gives you all of that information in terms of, so great cluster right here, my goodness. So you can see how you could certainly look at an area and I can keep playing with this map. I can bring it 
over, it will recalculate and give me then a new look at that area that I've adjusted my map to. So know that you can keep doing this in order to change the view, if that would be uh, of, of help to you. Know that that's available as well. And again, you can make that part of a PowerPoint presentation or uh, a, a or just print that off. And I could be looking, I'm just looking at location right now. Maybe I want to look at this, this income. So I could switch that up. Notice it's going to back out on my map. Let me adjust that again for you. And I'm just going to drill in again. And then it will start to apply all those ranges for me with those folks' incomes. So great way to look at using this map tool if in fact that would be something that you would like to, to uh, learn and, and make use of in your quest for knowledge as it relates to consumers. So here's my original list of 10,568. As I mentioned, you could print this or you could download this. Certainly save it if you've already created your own personal account. To download this information, you can grab all the names on each of these pages simply by putting a check mark in this empty box next to that first name and then advancing to your next page. And you'll see, if you scroll to the bottom, you can do 250 records at a time. There's no limit to how many times you might do that, just 250 at a time. So that's 10 pages, because there's 25 records per page here. So you could select this next page, keep advancing, you get the idea. I'm already at page four now. So you can do this pretty quickly. I'm, I'm being kind of cautious with my clicks. I've been known to click, be too click happy, almost going quicker than what the system can, can judge. There's my 250. Now it's as simple as selecting the download. We give you these options in terms of being able to format the information. Comma delimited is definitely the one that you want to use if in fact you're going to be making mailing labels. That is mailing label friendly. And as it relates to the information you might need, certainly you're gonna need the name, address. We would produce the phone number if there is one. You, could, you saw on some of those records, we didn't have a phone number. And then there are some additional elements which are included here. And what I would suggest, if you're going to take a lot of records, maybe you're gonna take a thousand records out or a couple thousand records out, I would open up your own version of Excel. My pages are all static, meaning you can't scroll down here to the bottom and save this and then keep adding to my records. This, our system won't let you do that. So what you'll need to do is open up your own version of Excel, and then you can simply Come back here to the top, go to this upper left-hand corner between cell one and A, click in there, copy that information, and then you could drop it onto your own version of Excel, and that way you can keep adding to that one Excel document versus having saved perhaps uh, 10 or so uh, individual Excel documents from me. If you want to do that, then you would minimize yours, come up here, close mine. It's going to leave you off right here again. Then you just simply follow the directions, go back. You don't want to revise your search because that'll change everything on you. Go back. It brings you back to that page 10. Then all you have to do is revise search. Because you got to get rid of all these check marks. Instead of doing it page by page, just revise search. It doesn't forget how you built your search. Then you simply view your results again. 
you're back on page one, all the check marks are gone, and then you just come to this page number box, type in 11. <laughs> like to take more records. So it is that simple to do these downloads. Just depends on, you know, what's gonna work in your, in your case best for you. So know that you can take as many of those downloads, 250 at a time. I'm gonna revise that because I don't want those check marks being left in there. So I cleared out everything, I'm back on page one. Let's open up this first record here. So here's how every single record is gonna be set up. We'll have that resident information here first. So there we've got the name, that address, city, state, et cetera. There, in this case, there is a cell phone, or excuse me, a phone number. I don't know if that's a landline or a cell phone. Gender, and everything we've seen about uh, Betty is that she's married. Now we don't call verify with Betty that she's married but everything that we've seen points to the fact that she's married. Here's that neighborhood information. So estimated home income and value, and that's what we do based off of the census information that we're using from back in, well, when, when was the last one? On 2010. So we keep making adjustments to that. Notice it, ha it also has here the percentage of owner occupied housing is about 45%. So there are a good number of apartments in this area. That's what also has an impact on both the census and our estimate as it relates to that. We do work with Google. So we have Google Maps embedded in each and every record. So there's that information. And then we have those lifestyle interests. So the, what we were looking for were these health, diet, and fitness. So there is interest in general health, exercise, and, and fitness. So know that, that that's why that record came in. And it came in because Betty or someone at that residence. Remember, she is she's the one that's listed on the record because it slants towards her because she does so much of the shopping. That doesn't mean that she necessarily got the uh, gym uh, signed up in her name, but that it is part of this household. So with that information, you could certainly know that someone in this household is very interested in exercise and you could send a mailer to this household to let them know about that. Now, if we did another search, let's say for gardening, and it doesn't mean that because you see that listed here that Betty would show up in that next search. She may not because of that scoring. Remember that, that there's that zero through nine, but we will show you those records of folks who score a six or higher. So in this case, she may not show up because it's not high enough. She's not scored high enough in her activity. So know that that is how, in fact, we're driving in all of this information based on their scoring in that category. That's how every single record is set up. Any questions on how I got to those records, those 10,000 plus results, or that of the record itself? while I get a quick swig. We don't have any questions, Bill, not yet. Okay, great, that means they got everything so far. Terrific. So let's do this. I'm gonna deselect Betty. I'm gonna go back and revise my search. And instead of using the city state, I am going to remove that. And we know that with this 
these particular amounts. We're going to have plenty of records. So I want to show you a couple of other geography selections. Let's imagine for a moment that you own a business. Maybe it's a fitness facility. You own a business and you would like to do uh, a radius around your business. You could select this radius option and then you could put in that address and your zip code and then the number of miles. Notice it will go out from one block to 150 miles in distance. So let's say that Martha, what is the, let's pretend that the, uh, that the gym or the physical fitness facility is actually that of the library's address. What is the library's address there? 400 Civic Center. 400 <laughs> Civic Center. And is it Street Avenue or just Center? Martha, did that, I leave? That, yeah, that's just fine. Okay, and the zip code there? 74103. 74103. Okay, and then what we can do is the number of miles. Now remember from that heat map, we know that there were a lot of folks that, that fit kind of the bill, if you would, that were from the from the uh, center of Tulsa to the southeast. So I'm going to say from the library, I'm going to go, let's do 0.25, or excuse me, 2.5. So two and a half miles. I'm going to just update my count because I want to see how many records I'm going to get. So I've got 765 records in that area. I'm going to go out a little bit further. I will go out to that five mile mark. What does that do? Oh yeah, so it jumped way up. So you can see how you can begin to alter your results just by changing that, that number of miles in this particular example. And then to get to those records, it's just as simple as view results. And there they are. And of course, if I overlay them against the heat map, we know we're gonna have kind of a circle around that address. And here I'll have to drill in, and you might have to reposition your your uh, your map here a little bit. This is not a rainstorm that's sitting over Tulsa. Yeah, so notice, notice how it's giving us, remember I said that there was that, from the previous map, there was this, uh, large group that was kind of down this way. So that's why we're seeing so many in this particular part of the, 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 the radius. So know that that radius tool, even though we're looking at residential information with consumers, know that you can use a business address like we did with the library in this example to show how that radius functionality would work. So certainly you could take advantage of, of that in order to see that, that area a little more clear. And of course I could overlay that home income or, or home value. I can always get back to my results. I could certainly go about downloading or printing that information if I wanted to print that. This is exactly what you're going to get. It's going to say, do you want that summary report, which is the, those, those 11, uh, excuse me, 13 different uh, uh, elements. So let's preview that. Okay, it says it's, it's been successfully completed, and there's your PDF.
So if that would be helpful for you to be able to have it laid out in that fashion, know that you could certainly do that. And I didn't customize this at all. I just went with the generic information. So no, you could set, in fact, be able to, to add more data in here if you would like that. If you would like that income or, or home value, et cetera, no, you could do that. So that is always available to you. And I can always get back. Let's use this tool. I'm gonna to revise my search. And instead of using this radius, I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna select the map-based search tool. This can be a tremendous tool for you. Once, when, when deploying the map, and don't mistake this with the heat map, when deploying this map, you want to select whatever elements are important here first, and then open up the map. It's not as toggle friendly going back and forth, if you will. So here at this point, what we can do is you could put in a physical address in the city and state if you would like to. You could put in just a zip code, just depends on how you want to do that. I'll put in Tulsa and say go, you always have to tell it to go. And so here I am in the uh, center of Tulsa there. I have these various tools that I could use at my disposal. And by the way, these tools are available in most of the modules. I can draw my own shape. So if, I, you know, for example, I know from our earlier heat map that this area, and I'll just kind of draw it here, this area, although I'm not very, I'm not a, it's kind of like etcho sketch. I guess that's kind of a good representation of what we saw earlier. And I'll double click it to finish it. And then it will calculate how many are in that particular shape. So uh, 1,165. Now, if if for some reason I wanted to leave an area out, let's say that I did not want to include this area. I can draw my shape in there again, double click to finish it, double click to finish it, thank you, Bill. And it says there are 124 results in this smaller shape. If I wanted to exclude this, this shape, I can double click in there, select exclude, say okay, and those 124 will be deducted from this 1,165. So in fact, if you said done here, oh, I'm not gonna be able to scroll far enough to show you. Uh, those, those records are ready for your viewing if you so wanted to. So I do have that ability. I can also use this true radius. So if this were that address that I put in earlier, I can use this true radius, and this will go out, like it said before, 150 miles. So, Notice it's beginning as I'm pulling away. It's a click, hold, and drag it away in any direction I want to go, by the way. Notice it shows that I'm out to about two miles right here. So you can certainly go out as far as you would need to. If that were it, you just release it, and there are 529 records in that radius. If that's all I needed, I could be, say, done here and then view my results. I'm not quite done, though. I am going to open up this boundary select, and it will start as large as the state. You could get as close as a neighborhood. This is what your zip codes across the area look like. This is one big zip code. My goodness. I'd hate to be the 
the census taker out here. Oh my goodness. Uh, so here are all my zip codes. All I have to do is click in any of these zip codes and it will tell me how many I have in that zip code. In this case, 272. If I wanted to compare that to this side, I could certainly do that. 352. So you can see how you could quickly get to that kind of information by simply selecting that particular zip code. And if you just wanted those four, Bingo, you just say done and you can view your results and then you'll get all of these records. And then I could put them back on that, on that heat map if I wanted to. So know that you can certainly take advantage of any of these tools. And the last one is in fact a drive route. I'm gonna to return to my tools and with the drive route, you can put in a, a beginning address and then an ending address it could be within your city. Maybe you're, maybe it's from, from, uh, maybe you're considering, maybe you have a, a doggy bistro on wheels and you're going to look for dog lovers in your community and you're going to create a drive route by which to, uh, deliver your product to all those folks that would be, uh, standing there, uh, waiting with their happy puppy to get their product. So know that you could use this drive route as well, if that would be something you'd like to do. It is really easy. I'll just put in, we'll just go, Martha, what's a really close community? I've, I've done still water before, but I know that's a ways out there. What's another really close community? Sorry, Bill. Martha. I was looking. I was perusing the questions, and I kind of got sidetracked there. Uh, to, to to the city of Tulsa. Yes. Yeah. A broken arrow. Broken arrow. Broken. Okay. And then you simply create the the buffer distance. In other words, how far off of center do you want to go? Do you want to go? just a block or two? Do you want to go, uh, it'll go a maximum of 15 miles. So I don't know how far Broken Arrow is away from, from Tulsa. Let's go, let's go a half a mile, so 0. 0.5. And then uh, we'll create the buffered route. And so there's Broken Arrow. I did not know that that was to the Southeast there. So along this route, there are 1,063 people that, that uh, would be potential customers along that route. So you can use any of these tools you would like as they fit your need. I'll say done here, and there's my 1,063, and I can get to those. And we happen to know those are, those are people that enjoy the gym, fitness and exercise. So it just depends on how you want to frame your search, but there are many, options well to do so yes um we just had a question about political party uh, yes if that's available so if you note here let's so we could either include or exclude anything from lifestyles let's let's leave that we're going to go back and do this we're going to come we're gonna remove that. We're gonna just do the Tulsa. We know we had 10,000 some odd. Let's do Tulsa. Go, Oklahoma. That was 10, yeah, 10,568. So then you can go to political party. In fact, I did a, a search like this. You'll notice the, the various listings that are here. So I did a search like this. It was a chamber event, and they knew that they did a great job of getting Republicans to town, but not such a great job of getting Democrats to town. So that was the only audience they wanted to look at. So with this group of folks that are, are into health, fitness, and exercise, how many of them, 3,600, or excuse me, 3,062, have an affiliation with the Democratic Party. And, and so this record 
Oh, look at Betty's still there. So we saw Betty before. So yeah, we have that information. And if that's, if that's helpful for you, great. You could certainly use that as a tool by which to identify that, those folks. Absolutely. And you can use any of these categories, obviously, to, to make your search more finite. You know, we, we know that there are other types of businesses that like to use the database, especially with the uh, consumer lifestyles. I have a perfect example. I have a cousin down in Gainesville, Florida, and he'll use the database when he gets a new customer. He has a carpet and tile cleaning service. And when he gets a new customer in an area, he'll look up their record Let's say that Betty was his new customer, for example. He'll look up Betty, her address, pulls up that record, and then what he does is he comes right here and he'll put in either 0.1 or 0.2, depending on how heavily populated the area is. Let's put in 0.1 and then just hit enter. And there are 111 records for other folks that live around her within a block. And then what he does, there's Betty, by the way. What he does is he sends out a mailer to these people about his carpet and tile cleaning service and offers them a discount on their, their first purchase with him. So know that you could certainly use the database in, in that fashion as well. So you can get to just a wealth of information in using the database. And I did that awful just searching for Betty. Let's, let's, other questions? Let me show you this. I am going to make this a little narrower. I'll get rid of that. I'm going to get, I'll leave Tulsa. I'm going to say I want charitable donors and I want dog lovers. Dog lovers. Oops, get rid of these other. Just dog lovers. So I have a total across Tulsa of charitable donors and dog lovers. And there are 27,022 records. Now notice this, I can come down here under more options. Right now I'm searching all that, or any of these that match. Now I can select all that match. So now I have 2012 records, and these are people that are charitable donors and dog lovers. So if, that, if a combination like that would be useful for you to get to a smaller number, know that you could, in fact, it will always default back to show any, but know that you could uh, change it to search all that match. And that way you'll get a certainly a, a smaller number, but they're into both of these categories. So know that you can certainly use that in, in, in that fashion. Any questions? We don't have any questions. Okay, well, let me do this. Since we have just a couple of minutes, I do want to show you the new movers, new homeowners. Now, we won't have these lifestyle categories because we purge all of that information when somebody moves because we don't know that everything is going to be the same, right? So when we go into, and I'll just come back to the homepage here, when we go into the U.S. Uh, new movers, new homeowners, and I'll just go right over to advanced search. By the way, additional filters, you know, goes to the same place. 
Let's do this. Let's say in the city of Tulsa, go, there's Tulsa, Oklahoma, and let's say move distance and time frame. So I'm going to say, show me everybody who's moved from, oh, let's say at least 40 miles away. up to let's do 2500 and notice it always defaults to the last six months it could be as recent as last week or within the last year i'll just say the last three months how many people have moved from at least 40 miles away up to 2500 miles away into tulsa 1184 in the last three months and this is what their record's going to look like. Going to have that same, you're responsible, don't use this for solicitation, if there is a phone number. They, the, again, we got this from that information that we have with the, through the change of address. So this person moved from 55 miles away into Tulsa. And this is that address information confirmed homeowner with an estimated household income and home value of X with estimated age, etc. So know that you could certainly do that. Now, how many, let's say that I sell, uh, let's say that I sell renter's insurance. How many of these folks are in fact renters? Of that 1,184, I have a total of 423 that are renters. So I could, I could put together a mailing to either that entire audience or part of that audience and let them know about my uh, rental insurance. And the other, another audience that would love to know about these renters are certainly real estate agents, right? Uh, or another audience that might love to know about these confirmed homeowners are, are uh, landscapers or uh, those, those uh, lawn maintenance folks. So I could certainly utilize that information in, in those situations. Or maybe I, maybe I own the, uh, a little pizza shop down the street and I want to do a radius from around my business address of a couple of miles. Maybe my maybe de my delivery area is five miles. So I might do five miles around my business's address and find all those new people, whether they're renters or homeowners, because both have to eat, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna market to them. So it just depends on how you want to uh, frame your search. I know of a gentleman that works for a company. It's actually a restaurant chain called Famous Dave's. And they use this particular module to let people know that are new to their communities. They're out of Tennessee that are new to their communities about uh, Famous Dave's Barbecue. Bill. Yes. Oh, gosh, it's already late, isn't it? I know. I'm, we have such I'm a sorry. good time. <laughs> My my mind is going a, a million miles a minute. Uh, let's get to the let's get to the question. I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, uh, Bill. Yes. Did you have a question? Do you have a okay? Here, here's your question. Good. Yeah. Yes. There is a question there for everybody who has attended today. If you would like to receive a twenty dollar gift card to Starbucks. You can certainly answer this question. The first person that sends me the correct response uh, to bill.carlson at infogroup.com will certainly claim that $20 gift card. So jot that question down if you would like. 
provide the total number of households in Tulsa County that enjoy travel. So remember those lifestyle categories, there is a travel and they would have to have an estimated income in those ranges, hint, hint. Send me that first one that sends it, gets it. With the correct answer, of course. Martha, it's all yours. Yes, thank you, Bill. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I know that everyone here is just can't wait to, to get started on this system. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we just we just have touched the tip of the iceberg here. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Yes. If, uh, if any of you would like help using these resources, we invite you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one virtual appointment with the Research Center staff for customized instruction that tailored to match your specific need. Uh, and to do that, you just contact the library's customer care service uh, ask us department and just go to our website, tulsalibrary.org to find out how to contact Ask Us, or you can just call Ask Us at 918-549-7323. Um, closing, thanks, big thanks to Bill for sharing his vast knowledge and expertise with us today. And, for, and, for, and to you for coming to our virtual event. And this is the last one in this series, but we're going to have some more series. So watch for more business tools series coming in the months ahead. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.